I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today we're looking at two good value options if what you really need is a dual cab ute, but you want the benefits and the practicality of a wagon body. And that's exactly what these two vehicles here give you. So today I've brought along the facelifted Toyota Fortuna, which has just come out last week here in Australia, and the not so recently facelifted Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. There was also a spot for the Ford Everest in today's comparison, but Ford couldn't come up with one quickly enough. So we have these two more affordable options. What's more affordable? Well, this is a Fortune GXL seven seater. It's about 62 grand drive away with the premium pack that we have inside on this one. Whereas the Mitsubishi is really genuinely affordable. It basically has the premium pack of the Fortuna on this mid-spec GLS, but it's only 54 grand drive away as a seven seater or 52 and a half as a five seater. You can't get the Fortuna with a five seat option. In many other ways, these two off-roaders are pretty much line ball on other specifications, but Toyota have given the Fortuna a beefier engine. Now with 500 Newton meters of torque from its 2.8, versus 430 Newton meters from the Pajero Sports 2.4. Both have four cylinder turbo diesel engines, however. There's also similarities in the packaging. Well, in some ways, behind the Fortuna GXL's manual rear door, you'll find its standard third row. However, as you can see, those third row seats stow away by pushing up to the side of the vehicle. And even though it has more boot space, 716 liters in five seat mode, you kind of have to dodge these seats. But when they're deployed, they're nice and easy to get down and they offer a decent amount of room as well. Plus pretty much no lip here to get your stuff in and out. And that spare is mounted beneath the vehicle. The Pajero Sport GLS, which remember is about 10 grand cheaper than the Fortuna, actually has a power rear door. Always nice if you have your hands full, Sure, it's not the quickest in the world, but it's okay. But the biggest difference in the packaging back here is that its third row, if you go for that option on the Pajero Sport, folds flat. But it does see the boot floor lifted up a little bit and a slight decrease in boot space compared to the Toyota at 673 liters. But it's nice and flat. We have a little bit of underfloor storage as well. And similarly, those rear seats are decently comfortable to sit in at least for kids. What are these vehicles like inside? There's quite a few differences and we'll start with the Mitsubishi as the price leader of this comparison. So, jumping up into the Pajero Sport and given this vehicle costs only 52 and a half grand drive away, you'd expect it to have a bit of a down market interior. I mean, this is a lot of car for the money but it doesn't. Instead, I actually think the Mitsubishi has the nicer interior of this group because it's styled like a regular crossover or SUV, and the seats in particular are very comfortable. As you can see, they're trimmed in black, sort of leather appointed trim, and the driver's seat has electric adjustment, and you can actually adjust that seat into a very comfortable position, at least for me. The steering wheel also sits at a reasonable height and is adjustable for both reach and rake. Both cars here are. And behind those, we have an attractive set of gauges, although no digital speedometer. Looking over here on the dash, we have a nice slate touchscreen, no integrated navigation, sadly, but we do have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and the stereo sounds okay. Mitsubishi have put a lot of effort into making this interior feel more premium. It's even soft down here where your leg rests, which is a significant omission on the Toyota, in my opinion, for long drives. It's also soft across the doors, though it is a little bit hard up here on the dash. It's no biggie. Similarly, the leather on the steering wheel is quite nice. We have these long paddle shifters for the eight-speed auto. Similarly, we do have leather on the gear shifter and practicality is decent. A tray ahead of that shifter, two big cup holders, and an okay size tray between the seats two USB ports that are easy to find here and decent sized door bins as well. But what about that second row? Well, the door opens decently wide, although it is a bit of a step up and into the Pajero Sport. But once you're back here, you know, the space on offer is okay. The one comment I would make straight away, your knees are a little bit elevated because the floor plan of the Pajero Sport sits a little higher, but legroom's okay for myself at six foot. Headroom's also good and tow room is mostly all right. Plus you could use this middle seat if you had to. The floor doesn't have too much of a hump in it. Now these back seats actually recline. These are already set to quite a recline. 
you can have them fairly upright. You can tip them back for a long drive, which is always a nice option to have. We do have a flip down armrest here with retractable cup holders. We've got air vents up here in the ceiling. We have another two powered USB ports here in the back and even a household power socket as well. So really it is decently equipped. And here I'll chuck in some footage of me jumping into that third row seat so we can see how roomy it is for adults. And next up, we'll take a look at the interior of the Toyota Fortuna. Moving over here to the Fortuna, the interior design immediately is quite different. Toyota have really just gone for a different philosophy. It's less car-like, less like a regular SUV, and more like the Hilux ute that the Fortuna is based on. And you can tell that in the shape and structure of the dashboard, which is fairly similar, albeit with a few different trimmings here in the Fortuna. So we have a new touchscreen, eight inches in size, and we now have a volume knob, which might seem like a small thing, but you really miss it in the Mitsubishi and the Fortuna didn't used to have it. So that's come back along with a uh, tuning wheel as well. The screen itself is pretty good. No wireless CarPlay, neither vehicle here has that, but we do now have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And similarly, the speakers are quite all right. Now, a quick note, this particular Fortuna has been optioned with the premium interior package, which is more or less three grand drive away. And it does take you up to these leather appointed seats in black electric adjustment for the driver. And so it does make it feel a little bit more special inside. We also get stuff like this kind of black wood accent here on the steering wheel. Yeah, it's quite nice. And, you know, initially you think you might be sitting in the Crusade, which is the top of the range for Tudor, but we miss out on stuff like heated seats, which you get in that higher spec vehicle. Speaking of the steering wheel though, same item as the previous Fortuna, which we looked at pretty recently. It's, you know, technically leather. It doesn't really feel like leather. It's very hardy material on the wheel. Same thing down here on the shifter. But, you know, it's adjustable for reach and rake now, which is good. Similarly, the gauges have actually been simplified a little bit compared to the previous Fortuna. We do have a digital speedo in this car, which is good for a country with lots of speed cameras. And the driving position is okay. I'd say it's a little more trucky, maybe a little higher set than the Mitsubishi, but it's really a much of a muchness. Material quality is a mixed bag. We do have some soft pieces like the upper half of the Fortuna's double uh, glove box there. And we have some soft bits on the doors too, but here on the dash, it's largely hard, hard down here where your leg rests, although there is a soft spot above the instrument binnacle. And practicality is pretty good. We've got bigger cup holders here. We have a deep central bin. We also have a bit of storage ahead of those cup holders for a phone and decent sized door bins too. So it's really a question of which interior you like better and you can let me know down in the comments. As for the back seat of the Toyota, well, these back doors open similarly wide, similar step in height to the Mitsubishi, not that easy and not that hard but your legs are actually supported better by these seats. The floor plan perhaps isn't quite as high, so you can actually, you know, sort of sit slightly more comfortably in the second row. Headroom, fine for myself at six foot. Legroom's good, toe room is similarly just okay, but you can use that middle seat very effectively here in the Fortuna. And in terms of amenities, we've got a flip down armrest. We've got retractable cup holders, similar story to the Mitsubishi basically. We have air vents up here in the ceiling and a 12 volt socket. We are missing the practicality of USB ports in the back and a household power point here in the second row, however. So I'd probably give that point to the Pajero Sport. And it really brings me on to the big question, which is, are you getting 10 grand more car here in the Fortuna GXL with the premium interior package, or are you better off going for the Mitsubishi? Well, with the interiors and many of the specs so line ball, it's really gonna come down to the driving to see whether you should walk away with a steal in the Pajero Sport or spend the extra money on the Toyota. What do I mean by line ball specs? Well, these two are so similar in key areas. They weigh almost the same. The Pajero Sport coming in at 2,065 kilos or 40 kilos more with the seven seat option, while the Fortuna tips the scales at 2,125 kilos. They can both tow 3.1 tonnes, while the Fortuna's GVM is 2.8 tonnes, and the Pajero Sports is 2,775 with a payload of 710 kilos, 
while the Fortuna's payload is 675. Ground clearance is 218 mils for the Pajero Sport, 225 for the Fortuna, while both of these trucks can weigh 700 millimeters. So, you know, it's not gonna come down to those sorts of measurements, it's really gonna be the experience behind the wheel. So what's the updated Fortuna like to drive and is it better from behind the wheel than the Pajero Sport therefore justifying the price premium that you pay for this Hilux based wagon? Well yes in some ways it is better than the Mitsubishi and in other ways it's pretty similar or even not as good but the main way I think this is something that a lot of people will care about is that the engine of the Fortuna is actually now a little bit ahead of the Pajero Sport. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan of Toyota's new 2.8 litre turbo four cylinder diesel when it came out, mainly because the initial outputs were really conservative and it was pretty sluggish and a bad pair to the six speed torque converter auto. Now, that's until this facelift came along and they've worked on both the auto calibration and they've given the engine a new turbocharger among other components, which have seen the outputs of the 2.8 increased from 130 kilowatts of power and 450 newton meters of torque to 150 kilowatts and 500 newton meters. And that 500 newton meters is available in quite a long plateau starting at just 1600 revs. And that's kind of the defining change to the Fortuna is it now feels considerably more effortless. You just put a little bit of throttle into it. It works a lot better with the six speed auto. It's almost as if the previous version of the auto wasn't tuned properly for a diesel. Um, it basically tried to shift to the lowest possible gear and then hang on to that gear for a really long time. Now, it's almost as if the Fortuna knows that it has torque and the acceleration remains in gear. It doesn't need to drop to the lowest possible ratio. So everything's more civilized, more refined and faster. So I'm really pleased to see that Toyota improved probably one of the most middling parts of the Fortuna experience, the engine and gearbox, they're now considerably better. But most of the other aspects to the Fortuna driving experience, the ride and the handling, are very similar to before. And there was nothing majorly wrong with them, I don't think, but nor is it kind of the best vehicle to drive in its class. The ride is fair, it's a little jiggly, um, you know, you can tell that this wagon is based on a ute because you just get that kind of constant shudder through the chassis but it's not obtrusive and it's the kind of thing that you get used to very quickly when you drive a vehicle like this. You just, it just shakes more than the typical SUV or crossover would uh, and it's not quite as refined uh, in terms of ride quality as Toyota's Land Cruiser Prado, but a Prado is a lot more expensive than this. That being said, I do think the Pajero Sport is more settled, particularly at low speed, but at higher speeds, like when you're doing country touring at 80 to 100 kilometers per hour, it's, it's fairly equal between the two. Now, the seats are fairly comfortable. I do think that they would be better if they had adjustable lumbar support, which neither vehicle does here. I would say that the steering wheel isn't quite as nice to hold as in the Mitsubishi. The material is, is nowhere near good enough in the Toyota, but by and large, the driving position is all right. Visibility is really good, We've got a great view forward. We can see the end of the bonnet, decent side mirrors, big rear glass. So it does make it a fairly easy car to maneuver in and the reversing camera is quite decent as well. Now, impressively, Toyota have kitted out the Fortuna with lots of active safety tech. So we have AEB in drive. We have adaptive cruise control, we have lane keep assist. Uh, now this model doesn't come with blind spot monitoring or rear cross traffic alert. This one is just the mid-spec GXL, remember. So how does the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport compare from behind the wheel? Pretty well, actually. You don't really get the sense in this vehicle that it's sort of the budget option in this wagon bodied, you know, utility segment. And it has been that for well, since it was released, really. Mitsubishi have tidied up the Pajero Sport here and there with a couple of cosmetic changes and also some new features inside. But really, dynamically, the package remains much the same. And that's a package that centers around the 2.4 liter single turbo diesel four cylinder engine that the Pajero Sport shares with the Triton. And it's largely based on the Triton in the same way the Fortuna is based on a Hilux. But anyway, the Mitsubishi DID engine produces 133 kilowatts of power and, and 430 newton meters of torque. So that 
used to be quite competitive with the Fortuna engine before that car got its most recent facelift. Now it's a little bit behind the eight ball, but to be honest, it doesn't feel that far behind when you're actually driving the thing. It doesn't have the Fortuna's new in-gear surge um, that it really demonstrates thanks to its 500 Newton meters of torque, but the Pajero Sport isn't left too far behind. Partially, that's down to the really well calibrated eight-speed torque converter auto. It uses those extra two gears to pretty decent effect and it's quite comfortable, quite torquey. You never really feel like you're caught too short in the Pajero Sport. And an important note is that the 2.4 litre engine in the Mitsubishi is actually quite a bit more refined than the 2.8 in the Toyota. It's quieter, if I put my foot down, I mean, you can certainly tell it's a diesel four cylinder, but that rattle is kept at bay quite a bit more successfully than in the Toyota. So if you value a quiet engine, the Mitsubishi will suit you more than the Fortuna. Now, fuel consumption is about the same in both cars, you know, closer to 9 litres than 10 litres in the Mitsubishi and closer to 10 than 9 in the Toyota, but that's the kind of thing that you won't massively notice over the lifespan of the car, I wouldn't have thought. But largely, these vehicles towing and off-roading specifications are pretty similar. They can both tow 3.1 tonne braked, 310 kilo load on the tow ball, and even their GVM and and unladen mass is very, very similar within 50 kilograms of one another. Uh, and that being said, the Pajero Sport does benefit from the fact that you can order it without the seven seats. So you save 40 kilos uh, way back there in the boot if you do that. And I'm sure that appeals to many people. Whereas in the Fortuna, it comes as a seven seater. If you wanna unbolt those seats, then you can do that. But it's really in the ride and handling, I would say that the Pajero Sport sets itself apart from the Toyota. It's just more comfortable and more car-like. The suspension system is fundamentally similar. Both of these wagons have a coil sprung rear end, unlike the leaf sprung rear ends in the utes that they're based on. But the Pajero Sport just pulls off a more level and less jiggly ride, um, meaning that if you're coming from a car-based crossover or SUV, you won't find it quite as much of a shock as to how agricultural these vehicles can be. It's still by no means totally car-like, uh, but it's just more comfy in the Mitsubishi, I would say. Like the Fortuna though, the steering is fairly slow in terms of ratio, fairly vague. The Toyota is probably a little bit more athletic um, in terms of steering, and I feel like you can rely on the Toyota a little bit more in the bends. You know, it hangs on a little bit more, uh, with a little bit more grip, I would say. But the Mitsubishi, it, you're able to contain it, it's not too bad, and both of these vehicles demonstrate quite safe, quite neutral understeering characteristics before you sort of cinch them back into line. Of course, they're both rear drive in too high, so you can have some shenanigans on gravel if you want to, but I think most people probably play it fairly straight with these vehicles. And in terms of safety features, this version of the Pajero Sport, the GLS, has adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, AEB, and a good reversing camera, but we don't have the lane keep assist that the Fortuna has. So that's a detailed comparison of the updated Toyota Fortuna against the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. And with such a gulf in price between these two similarly specified models, are you better off saving your money with the Mitsubishi or spending more on the kind of dependability of a Toyota? Now, undoubtedly, the image of the Toyota, the dealer network, the availability of parts throughout Australia are big selling points for the Fortuna. And it is a good vehicle and the upgrades are very worthy, particularly the boosted engine that now finally feels like it has enough torque. So well done Toyota on that. But for myself, the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport is basically 90% as good for a lot less money and actually with a longer warranty. Mitsubishi are basically permanently offering a seven year warranty on the Pajero Sport here in Australia, along with that drive away pricing. So if I was buying in this segment, I'd actually go for the very well resolved Pajero Sport, though I'd really understand any choice you made between these two cars. And now I'll turn it over to you. So please let me know down below in the comments whether you'd go for a Fortuna, a Pajero Sport, or something else like a, an Everest or an MUX. Let me know all your thoughts. And while you're there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.